Hey everyone, Dan at Ochoco Bushcraft. Well, I wanted to share with you guys what I've been doing with my knives. I've mentioned this on previous videos, and especially this uh, Becker BK9. But over the past couple months, I have been doing a lot of experimenting on removing the black coating from all of my knives. I've showed you, I think, my SE6s and some of my other uh, knives. I've removed the coating. I have put on patina. I've experimented with um, different chemicals to get different finish. I like the vinegar just because it's so easy to use, so I keep coming back to the vinegar. And uh, on my Beckers, which is cool, you can buy just plain micarta handles. And so that gives me the chance to fool around with different colors of dye. So out of all the ones I've done, I mean, I've done my little uh, SE, what are they? The little SE Zula. I've done the Becker BK-14s, SE-6s, Becker uh, BK-4s on up. This Becker BK-9 right here is my favorite. And so I've been having a lot of fun out here using it. But uh, so what I did, again, is I used... Uh, paint stripper and I stripped off the black coating from here down. I left it on the handle so that uh, the handle stays protected uh, with that black coating on it because from time to time I'm going to have to redo the blade. So I sanded that down with thousand grit sandpaper after I used paint stripper and then put on uh, vinegar patina, just soaked it in. I think I found an old flower vase and filled it with uh, vinegar and soaked it for about an hour. And it had a real nice patina. Uh, if you look back through my videos, I just did a video on making a mallet here uh, a while back. And I did a lot of batoning through the wood. So these streaks that you see are from batoning through that wood. So at some point in time, I will uh, put another coat of vinegar on this. But... You know, it's a well-used knife. It's been used a lot since I put that patina on there, so you can see the wear on it. The other thing I did, using a friend's belt sander and 120 grit sandpaper, is I put on a very sharp 90 degree spine that starts clear up here on this side of the thumb ramp and runs all the way full length of the spine to the edge. But what I really liked um, on the Beckers, so I can't do this with my Essies. On my Essies, I just order the handles from the Knife Connection, um, Canvas Micarta or G10. But on Amazon, you can get Canvas handles, Canvas Micarta handles for the Beckers that are just basically a plain color. And I, I got a set that was actually a brown, a light brown, and I put dark green trying to hold this where the light will reflect it a little bit. I put a dark green over the top of the brown. And so, yeah, if you, yeah, you can see that. So it highlighted all of the lines in here. So I've got dark green lines running through what looks more like a dark brown, but it's actually a greenish brown. So it gives it kind of a camouflage look. So I really like this. Uh, Becker BK9 and in the winter time when I'm building natural shelters I like to have a bigger knife for taking down tree boughs so while we're out here I just thought we would uh, I would show it to you oh the sheath hang on I gotta show you this sheath I went to my local leather maker Painted Hills custom leather they make all my sheaths for me and I had them do a custom sheath a little different than anything they'd done we had them fancied up a little bit by putting a feather on the side. The other thing, and it's on a dangler, has a leg tie down. The other thing I do on my sheaths, and I'll put uh, her contact in the description. And I want to show you guys this. If you're doing leather sheaths for a big knife, I like, rather than having the two snaps that come around the handle, two pieces of leather, I like to have one that comes over the back corner. And we put on a softer piece of leather here. So when I'm around camp or walking, doing stuff, this is flexible, softer leather. 
I tuck it right through the loop, loop of my dangler and it's out of the way. And I leave my knife undone while I'm walking, while I'm doing chores. I leave it unsnapped. It's not going anywhere. The leather is a good snug fit, but it allows me to get the knife out quickly if I need to without having to unsnap it. And the snap is completely out of the way, tucked in here, and it'll stay in there till I pull it out so there's no chance of cutting the leather. And then if I'm, you know, relaxing back in camp or something, laying down, I'll snap it back up. But for the most part, it stays unsnapped when I'm out and about. Okay, let's have some fun. So I mentioned I put on a nice 90 degree spine. So that just makes it very quick and easy work to take a piece of fat wood and get fine scrapings. I make a little pile of those. And with that 90 degree spine, get my ferrule rod out here. Should have had it ready to go. Makes a nice fire maker. And somebody had asked me about uh, the black that gets on the knife from using the ferro rod. Just wipe it off on your pants. It comes right off. It doesn't stain the blade. All well, that black from the ferro rod, from striking, just wipes right off. And uh, won't, you know, I, I use this knife for food prep carving sausage and different things. And once you wipe that off on your pants, there's no taste. It's gone. Okay, hang on, let me grab something to chop. All right. So this is just a little tiny dead limb laying here, but I've shown this on other videos. The Becker, out of every knife I've used out here, even more than my um, SC Hoongless and Hoongless 2, because it's so light, it only weighs roughly a pound, it, it's, you can really snap your wrist with it, which makes it an amazing, amazing delimmer. So in the wintertime, I need to get an emergency shelter up, some uh, fir boughs down and make a shelter. The quicker and easier that I can do that, the better. And I have never used a knife that does it quicker or easier than the Becker BK9. It just does an amazing job. And it's a chopper. We just broke the stump. <laughs> and as big as it is, because it's light in the hand, whereas the SE Hoongless and Hoongless 2, which I love to use both, but they're heavier in the hand, and so your wrist and, and will get and form will get tired sooner carving. The BK9 is just so light that you can carve with it too and not get tired and it doesn't have a finger choil but 
the way the handle's built, you can bring what you're carving all the way up next to your finger. So you can choke up on whatever you're carving with. You don't need the finger toil the way the handle's designed. See that? I got it right next to my finger. You know, chopping, bringing down boughs. And that's just my number one thing again in the winter, like I said, is I need to get shelter up quick. And for delimbing, getting a big pile of fir boughs for bedding for a roof, nothing I have used yet, knife-wise, is faster or easier than the Becker BK-9. All right, let me grab something else here. Okay, my stump's literally falling apart, so we'll see if it even holds together for this. But, Even for carving just notches and things, it might look like it's big and awkward, but it, just because of the way it's built, and uh, the weight of it, it's not bad. And if you go back and look through some of my videos, go check out the mallet where I made the mallets using the Becker BK9. Uh, the videos called let's make a mallet or two you'll see me using this for that project and it's just just an amazing knife I can't say anything bad about it and it holds an edge very well and what's cool too is the price so to get into one of these they're just a little over a hundred bucks on Amazon now it comes with like a blast, kind of a plastic handle, Zytel, I think it's called, and a molly sheath, which you may or may not like. I don't like. <laughs> but they put their money in the steel. 1095 Crovan steel, which is basically 1095 carbon. They call it Crovan, um, with a little bit of chromium added for uh, additional hardness. The blade holds an amazing edge. But you can get into the knife for just a little over a hundred bucks, a big old, you know, nine inch Bowie knife. And then as you're able, you can pick up some micarta handles for about 50 bucks on Amazon and go down to, you know, local retail store and get some writ dye, color of your choice. I've done brown, I've done the dark green, I've done some other colors just for experimenting, but uh, put your own personal touch on it and then you know, if you want to put a 90 degree spine on, just rubbing it over the back of a belt sander while it's spinning a few times, you got your 90 degree spine. You want to work at it, get some paint stripper and some thousand grit sandpaper, bring that, take that coating off, uh, soak it in vinegar for an hour and you'll have a patina on it. And then whatever you like for a sheath, you know, if you like the original, want to do some custom leather, whatever but you know if I was making a tent stake or something and I wanted to put a seven notch in or trap triggers the knife is just not awkward for me anyway at all to work with and I haven't tried it yet but Mark at Sagebrush Customs very good friend of mine his favorite knife of all was the BK9 he used to carve spoons with these things he did some amazing stuff and one of these days I'm going to have to give it a shot and uh, Mark's really one that really got me into the Beckers unfortunately he's not with us anymore but you know I just carving a seven notch Putting a point on something. Again, 90 degree spine. You need to do some hammering. You can use spine on the blade to 
do some light hammering. Don't hit your finger. <laughs> and uh, again, for bringing down tree boughs or doing a shelter for chopping, just amazing knife. Uh, let me grab something else. I'm having fun. Okay. I don't want to take anything alive just to show you guys, but here's a dead tree top and show you delimbing. We'll delimb this whole side in one swipe. <laughs> this is amazing. So yeah, I love my Essies, but I love my Beckers too. And if you go back through my videos over the years, you'll see that sometimes I carry one, sometimes I carry the other. And if I carry one for a long time, usually when the weather changes, I'll switch to another just because I enjoy using them. Um, throughout the summer, I did a lot of hiking this summer. In fact, I think I did more. In fact, I know I did. I did more hiking this summer, just taking off and putting in the miles and hiking up, climbing some cliffs and <laughs> going over some crazy terrain uh, than I have in probably the past 10 years. I, just a tremendous amount. I carried my SE6 with me on all of those hikes because it was just so light and convenient. But as winter is on its way, you can see this morning we got some chill in the air. It's been storming. It's been cold, rainy, down, getting close to freezing. So I break out the stocking cap. Been wearing my wool gloves. I switch over to carrying a big knife along with a small knife. And of course my hatchet, it, it, ha it gets used a lot. It never gets left behind. I got the small Becker BK-14 right here, hatchet, folding saw, and big knife. So as I sit still for winter, you know, I will still use my hatchet for pounding, you know, especially if I'm putting up a reflective fire and I need stakes to hold it in place, uh, doing construction, getting pieces of fat wood chopped out of a stump like this. My hatchet still gets plenty of use. But when I need to get a big pile of tree boughs down quickly for a shelter and just a lot of other tasks, uh, that BK-9 becomes a great winter knife. So my plan is for this winter to carry this newly customized BK-9. Again, if you guys are looking for a big knife that you absolutely can't beat the price on, just over 100 bucks gets you into Becker BK-9. And then as you are financially able, you can upgrade it. You can add the handles, the sheath and stuff. But to get started, I can't think um, of a better quality knife in that price range to get you started down the road of having a big knife that will last you years and years. I still have my very first Becker BK9 at home and it doesn't have a chip in the blade. It's been through heck for a lot of years and still performs awesomely. Dan at Ochoco Bushcraft, enjoy it yourselves everyone. And uh, as fire season is approaching an end, when that comes, believe me, I have got a bunch of cool videos lined up for you guys. Worst time of the year for me is fire season and I am just this early rain and drop in temperature that we're having in September has given me high hopes that we're gonna have an early winter. And I hope so, because the day fire season's over, I'm coming out here and we're doing fire. Take care, everyone.